This is Carl Moore talking management for the Globe and Mail. Today I'm delighted to speak to Anil Gupta, who's a professor at INSEAD in Europe. Good morning, Anil. Good morning, Carl. Recently, Mark Hurd of HP was let go because of indiscretions that he did, financial and so on. We see this as not an uncommon thing. How can CEOs, who are so bright and so clever, how can they get themselves caught in these sorts of indiscretions? I think, you know, we can look at many explanations, but the one that I would pick as number one, and particularly for CEOs who have had a history of being very smart, very competent, so therefore you can trust their judgment generally, that the, the, the one thing that I would pick is that in some sense success itself breeds this uh, propensity to engage because it, 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 it runs the risk of creating in the person's mind an aura of invincibility, you know, an aura that I can do no wrong, uh, and essentially that blinds them uh, to the things that you or I may consider to be, you know, just downright stupid, uh, but it doesn't appear to the person doing it. But th this must have a negative effects, not just obviously getting fired, but within their ability to deliver great results and to run a corporation well. How do they, what advice might you have for chief executives that they're listening to get around this problem, to avoid this trap? Yeah, I think the, you know, for chief executives, uh, and there's something I've, you know, thought about a little bit, uh, you know, coming uh, from my own research on trust. Uh, and so, you know, I, and, and particularly if you look at uh, what has happened to CEOs, to corporate leaders, certainly to political leaders, uh, is this loss of trust. Uh, and so I think of trust as really trust in competence, uh, trust in benevolence, and trust in integrity. I think today the trust in competence, of course, is very critical, but people like Mark Hurd, uh, they generally don't have an issue. You know, they have a proven track record. Trust in benevolence is something that is very hard to expect. You know, I mean, in, a, in an ever-changing global world, we know that some activities might get shut down and some other activities somewhere else may get built up. Uh, so therefore, benevolence, I think, is by and large gone. But it's trust in integrity, you know, in terms of that, can I trust you to be true to your word? Can I trust you to uphold standards of behavior, you know, both from a legal point of view and from an ethical point of view? And that's something I think really can be done, irrespective of what's happening in the economy, in the industry, and to that particular company. And I think what CEOs really need to do is to say, you know, there is a one universal. I may not always be competent. And certainly, many times, I may not be perceived as benevolent, but 100% of the time, I must be perceived as a person who is acting with integrity. But how does a CEO not get caught up in the, the bubble of an entourage, of the posse, that, that surrounds him or her and keeps them away from reality and a sense of what the average person go, no, that's gone too far? Yeah, and I think, I mean, the, that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a very interesting point, which really is that, uh, that does the CEO, in fact, uh, essentially remain in that bubble, or does the CEO touch the reality? The CEO needs in person, you know, to spend time with customers. You know, it's like what I like in the case of, say, Indra Nui, to actually, you know, when going to China or India or emerging markets, that you don't just read market research reports, you actually go and visit customers' homes, okay? And of course, you know, you can't visit a million customers' homes, but at least it brings you in line, you know, similarly, you know, how, how closely is the CEO in touch with what's happening to the people on the factory shop floor? You know, people in the clerical staff, people who do the selling, you know? Are they merely numbers uh, uh, in, in, in data on your staff? Or actually, you know, do you have some, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, an understanding of what kind of lives they lead?